which is in there, where the lying in state has been happening, to the state gun carriage of the Royal Navy, which will be drawn up uh, in front of these doors once the Royal Party is inside. Duke of Sussex there, and uh, Peter Phillips, the Princess Royal son, the Lord Great Chamberlain, who's in charge of the royal sections of the Palace of Westminster, the Speaker of the House of Commons greeting them, Lindsay Hoyle, and the Speaker of the Lords, the Lord Speaker, Lord um, McFall. Back at Westminster Abbey, more guests arriving representing the armed forces, representing charities and other organisations, patronages of Her Majesty. They've all been invited for a specific reason, because they represent either great achievements in the <coughs> Queen's reign, or just really representing the Queen's own interests. And uh, we're seeing now some of the other members of the royal family, yes? Prince and Princess Michael of Kent, we've just seen, and their children, and the Gloucesters and their children. And I think one of the things that really struck me um, after that procession that Robert was talking about as they were going into the Lying in State was just how many extended members of the Queen's family were there. And that was so wonderful to see. I think it might have been about 64 of them. And, you know, again, that testimony to family, um, as well as duty and all the other things that we've been speaking about. And, of course, talking of family, there you see two of the youngest members of the royal family, Prince George and Princess Charlotte. It's the first time I think we've seen them really taking a, a part since the, the death of the Queen. I mean, and what a, an extraordinary day for them to embark on their first royal procession, as we've been to see at Westminster Abbey. But I think everyone was very keen that they should play a central role today. We saw the Queen Consort, didn't we? And we saw the Duchess of Sussex as well, well I think, in one of the other cars. Um, some of the grandchildren arriving. Yes, there's Lady Louise Mountbatten Windsor and um, James Seven, the, the Earl of West, Countess of Wessex's uh, son. There, they of course uh, played a, a, a key part in the in the vigil at Westminster Hall on Saturday night. Very movingly, it's it's been uh, a, a feature of, uh, of of these events that the, the, the younger younger generation, uh, as it were, the grandchildren have played a, a part. Um, that never happened with with previous royal funerals, it's Princess Beatrice. Well, the Queen, of course, had a very close relationship with all of her grandchildren. She, she adored them, and she enjoyed having those wonderful summers with her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren, too. Mm -hmm. Here we are in the Abbey. Congregation now, more or less, all in place now that the members of the royal family have... Uh, joined, but not all of them, of course, because the King and senior members of the Royal Family are across the road in Westminster Hall. They're at the Palace of Westminster. And there, the great sight of the naval ratings with the carriage. Just there in the background, you can see the great wheels of the state carriage, the gun carriage, um, which since 1901 has been kept for the specific purpose of um, bearing the monarchs coffin and the naval ratings will be in charge of taking that heavy carriage with the Queen's coffin initially to Westminster Abbey and then from there to Wellington Arch ready for the rest of the journey by road to Windsor but the ratings here as we mentioned earlier lots of them just been in the armed services just been in the Navy for a few months and uh, what a remarkable day for them, and what a remarkable duty for them to be shouldering. The gentlemen at arms are just approaching one of the historic monarch's bodyguards, and the and the Royal Company of Archers, much in evidence in Edinburgh last week because they are the King's bodyguard in Scotland, and the uh, Yeomen of the Guard, who are another form of royal bodyguard formed in 1485 by Henry Tudor, uh, the gentleman-at-arms, uh, slightly younger institution from 1509. So the Queen Consort 
is uh, arriving at Westminster Abbey. I'm talking to David Hoyle, the Dean of Westminster, um, being shown in and uh, welcomed. And they'll be making their way all the way down the nave. George and Charlotte, the Prince and Princess, uh, looking immaculate. Yes, I mean, I think we, we've come to expect nothing less of these two mm. lovely royal children. And I'm just thinking back to the service of Thanksgiving for the Duke of Edinburgh, and they were there too. So right now in Westminster Hall, the coffin is being moved by the bearer party from the Queen's Company, 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards, to the door of Westminster Hall, ready for it to be transferred to the gun carriage. <laughs> 